Hello, welcome to your online demonstration of Big Red Book Accounts. If at any stage you have any questions on the software, please do not hesitate to contact our sales team on 01 204 or visit our website www.bigredbook.com. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the software, how you can look after your sales, purchases, VASH and your full reports. We'll start with our lookup facility, which holds your main information about customers, suppliers, bank accounts, abbreviations, and products. Within the customer and supplier file, I'll show you how easy it is to set up, change a customer supplier's records. As you can see here, you have your list of customers, their account code, and their name. At any stage, if you'd like to add a new customer, just click on add, generate an account code, fill in their name, address, details, etc. and click save. You can also drill into the customer's details by double clicking on them. You can drill right down to transactional level. So if someone is querying an invoice, you can pull it up directly from their account and reprint if needed. This also shows you the balance outstanding on their account. The exact same can be said from the supplier side. Within your lookup facility, you also have your list of bank accounts. Within Big Red Book, you can hold up to 32 bank accounts. But in this example, I just have the one. So again, you can do full ledger from here. So if I just double click on my bank, you'll see the list of transactions that have gone through that particular bank account. So when your bank statement comes in, all you have to do, double click them, and it'll clear your bank, your bank account for you. So you can see there's an outstanding balance now of zero. So your bank account and your Big Red Book are both correct. Abbreviations are just words that you use all the time just to save you typing, so it's just a quick way of, uh, of entering information into the system itself. And then you have your list of products. These are products that are shown on your invoices. So again, I'll just go into one here. We can change it just to show you that the information that's stored here. So you have your product code, your details, and the unit price, and the default fat rate for that particular product. Now I'll just cancel out of that. What I'll now do is show you some transactions. So we'll go from sales invoicing to our cash book to receive the money and our purchases book to our checks journal to pay any bills. And I'll show you how both of these are going to affect your customers and your suppliers within your lookup facility. So we'll start with the sales invoicing. Now in your sales invoicing book, you'll see your months along the top. So it runs for 12 months and then you have 13, 14 and 15, which are basically month one, two and three of your following financial year. So you're not rushing off at the end of the year to get everything closed. Now we'll add a sales invoice. So I'll just click on add and OK. And this brings up my sales invoice or my credit note screen, depending on what you're doing. The sales invoice number is automatic in this case. We've space for purchase order number, delivery docket number. The VAT type is domestic in this case. So I'll just click on my Rolodex. This brings up my list of customers. So we'll use Abud. Obviously the delivery address comes up there and there's a comment line. So if there's anything that you'd like to appear on the invoice, such as please settle account within 30 days, etc. If I click on add, this gives me my Rolodex again for my uh, stock items. You can, if you like, just override that and free type in here, or else you can click on your Rolodex and it'll give you up your list of products. So we'll just use debtors here. So it pulls in the description, unit price, etc. And we're just going to buy one. Along the side here, we have what are called analysis categories. So you can have up to 14 different categories. And basically, these are just a breakdown of your sales and purchases for your own reporting. So if you'd like to group products, um, you'd be able to pull out reports then to see what's best selling for yourself. So in this case, we have software training and support. As the debtors is a software module, I'm just going to hit page down and that'll automatically fill in then the amount. So I save that. You'll see now that you have your invoice complete. I just click on save. Gives you the option to add another invoice and it appears into your sales book. So if I go into my lookup facility here and go into my customers and Abud you'll see that invoice now has gone against their account and their balance has changed. I'll just show you a quick print preview of that particular invoice. 
Now this is a fairly standard template that we have within Big Red Book. There are up to 70 different invoice templates, but we can also change or add to an invoice if required by yourself. So if you'd like a logo, etc. brought in, we can do that for you. So you'll see on the invoice, you have your own address, contact details, the customer's accounts, and obviously the description. And then down the bottom, we have our total. Now we'll just actually receive cash then from Abwood, just to say that they've paid off that particular invoice. So let's go to cash book. And again, you have your months along the top. So it's a cash receipt. Again, to select your customer, so Abwood. And you'll see here, it gives us their ledger balance. So that's exactly how much is owing to us. So we'll just, for instance, we'll just say that a thousand has come in. Now, to say it came in by checks, so you're going to lodge it directly to your bank account. So I click on save and lodge. It gives me up my list of bank accounts here. So my default is Bank of Ireland. If I just click on save, 